Webflow vs Squarespace, a developer's opinion. I'm Marian, software engineer who worked with Squarespace for 10 years and with Webflow one year. Most of my work was with custom code solutions, but I also worked only with the editors of the platforms. Let's get started. Point number one, ease of customization with the platform's user interface, the editor. This is what you can do with the editing options of the platform without needing to code. Squarespace editing is straightforward. You just drag and drop components and place them where you want. Also, additional options for components are listed in an easy to use way. So one can create pages and components faster and easier than on Webflow. However, the Webflow editor can create a wider range of possibilities in terms of look than Squarespace. The downside might be that one needs to know basic concepts of HTML and CSS in order to use the options properly. I give Squarespace 10 and Webflow 7. Point number 2 ease of maintenance for non-developers. As I mentioned in the first point, because of the Squarespace drag and drop editor and the simple customization options of components, it is very easy for non-technical people to add, edit or remove parts of web pages. On the other hand, with Webflow, a non-technical person can mess up the entire website by changing one or more options that link to global CSS classes. Having the ability to work with CSS classes is a great feature for people with experience, but for regular people it can be hard to understand. Squarespace gets 10 and Webflow 5 at this point. Point number 3. Plugins. Webflow has hundreds of plugins compared to Squarespace's handful. So on Webflow, if you are looking for something that is not offered by default, you can check their list of plugins and chances are high that you will find what you are looking for. Webflow gets 9 and Squarespace 4.5. Point number 4. Developer friendly. Documentation and options for developers. Webflow has much more options for developers compared to Squarespace and has good documentation. Because of this, developers can create additional features on top of Webflow. In my opinion, Squarespace doesn't care too much about developers and focuses more on ease of use for non-technical people. I give Webflow 9 and Squarespace 5. Dynamic content. Webflow has a powerful option called CMS, Content Management System, that can be used in numerous ways and can store data like text, images, video, and time, then gets populated on dynamic pages. Squarespace has a few options designed for specific cases like a blog, portfolio, or event pages. Webflow receives 10 and Squarespace 5. Point number 6. Online Store. Both Squarespace and Webflow are intended at the moment for small and medium-sized businesses, so they don't have as many options and plugins like Shopify. Squarespace gets 6.5 and Webflow the same, 6.5. And the last point, point number 7, user accounts. Squarespace has added user accounts in the recent years with their e-commerce arrival, and it covers basic things like viewing orders and membership areas. It doesn't provide ways for developers to customize or extend it. On Webflow, while I was preparing the video, I saw that they are giving up on user accounts in 2026 and might be keeping a basic version for e-commerce. I really like the idea of user accounts on Webflow and hopefully they will come with a new way of doing it that will also be developer friendly. Squarespace gets 5.5 and no rating on this for Webflow. Leave me your thoughts in the comments, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button, share, subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you for watching, have a great day.